in This Week in Cute, there is a new animal officially named. It is Adorpus. No, it is a new <laughs> octopus. Let's take a look at why it's so cute. They're really gelatinous and fragile, and they have relatively large eyes for the size of their body, because they're pretty small. They have a well-developed web between the arms. They'll just spread that web and kind of like parachute along. And they kind of steer themselves with the fins on their mantle. As someone that's describing this species, you get to pick what the specific name is. One of the thoughts I had was making it Apisthetuthus adorabilis. <laughs> because they are just, yeah, they're really cute. So cute! I don't know. I love it. I just imagine like it looks on the when it's on the ground it's cute, but when it's flying, I just imagine that thing like a face hugger just whoop, right over your face. No, like, ah, those God, are wow. scorpions, not adorable little octopuses. Mm, um, I don't so trust it. What uh, as she pointed out, that was Stephanie Bush, a postdoctoral fellow at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, was that scientists basically get to choose the names. So mm -hmm. she decided to call it uh, adorableus. Adorable. That's so cute. So cute. Yeah, that yeah. may be cuter than the actual thing. What, what about this? Have you ever seen uh, My Mom and Dad Save the World? No. You ever, oh, anybody? No. no? Okay. No. Well, I know when something's small and little, it can look very cute like in that movie, but when that thing grows up, God knows. That could be like the spawn of a kraken. You don't know. Have, do we, have we seen a full-size one? She apparently just discovered it. Well, that God knows what that, that thing's going to become. That is the first time we've seen that oh, okay. octopus. That's fine. It previously appeared in Finding Nemo. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it did look much like a Pokemon. I appreciated oh. that. Like the first level of a Pokemon, pre-evolution. Um, that's cute. I do have a question for you based off of this. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that thing is naturally occurring and everything. But we, we know that with dogs, humans have purposefully bred for cuteness and everything. And I wonder, as we gain more and more capability to uh, genetically select for different characteristics <laughs> and maybe even create custom creatures... I don't think we created this octopus. No, I'm not saying that we created the octopus. I'm saying that, do you think that... I think it's natural that at some point people are going to want a tiny elephant pet. Or like, they talked about that in the original Jurassic Park, the book. They're going to want these cute little things like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like grumpy cat, like cats like that. Is that going to be okay if we unleash that power? Onto the world if it's, to create these custom creatures. If it's creatures. ethical to breed animals. Is it ethical? Well, it depends. Does it hurt the animal? We had this conversation before on the werewolf cat, which was bred werewolf to cat. a cat that a kitten that was bred to look like a werewolf, and I've it was like that. this cat's cute. But is it fair for us to uh, breed these uh, genetic features that are maybe not so good for the animals? What mm. if it hurts the animal? What if the animal's in constant pain? What if it's health problems? Um, it's always cold because of its patchy fur. What if uh, it, oh, it's not oh, able so to cute. see or jump or run like a normal animal in its normal? Uh, state of evolution would be a lot of the dogs that we've bred can't live in the wild like french uh, like bulldog is not well, going to like run off in a prairie legs wouldn't be able to compete exactly with, uh, you know a more wolf-like canine yep so it's it's a gray area i think in terms of uh ethical or ethics yeah uh i mean if it doesn't hurt the animal okay i was just curious i guess for now like fun. we should feel lucky that we have octopuses naturally occurring like that perhaps and we can start to give them out as pets uh, something I wanted to talk about, though, is that on the note of scientists being able to name animals, whatever they feel like, uh, there's a horsefly from 2011 mm -hmm. that was named uh, Scoptia Beyonce, after Beyonce. Oh! Uh, yeah, not <laughs> Kelly Rowland. The jellyfish uh, Phylea Zappi was named after Frank Zappa. Uh, in a bid for the scientist, the scientist wanted to mate the musician. Mm. I don't know if it worked, but good on you for trying. Um, and then there was another dinosaur, which the name I cannot pronounce in any way. Tyanacosaurus. Tyanacosaurus nedagoapeferima. And the reason why that second word is so weird is it's the, fir the surnames of all the main stars of 1993's Jurassic Park. Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff nice. Goldblum, Richard Attenborough, Bob Peck, Martin Ferraro, Ariana Richards, and Joseph Mazzello. So, Cool. It's a, <laughs> Good I mean, job with if the names. I were, if I were a scientist, I would probably sneak things that I like in uh, names of animals all the time. I'd, uh, I'd do like Tyrannosaurus Joe. Just normal. Just He's just a regular Joe. Tyrannosaurus. He's not Joe like hoity toity. Yeah, exactly. It's approachable. Uh, I think I would definitely do that. I mean, it's names are what we make of them. It doesn't need to be a specific, you know descriptor or, mm -hmm. or uh, although in this case actual it was. latin yes uh or if it's adorable why not talk about that feature more 
in the octopus, and then people will look at it and talk about it on their web series. There you go. There we go. Full circle. Audience, what do you think of naming animals? Is it right to give them kind of not-so-scientific or Latin names? Let us know below. <laughs> I went after a few registers when I asked that question. Let us know below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe for more.